Hi, I'm Mark Rosner. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco's Server Products Group. This video focuses on Red Hat and CentOS Pixie Kickstart installs on UCSM series servers onto their virtual local storage. This video covers both 6.5 and 7.0 in Red Hat and CentOS and the differences between the two. There's another video to refer to that details more of the concepts of the virtual local storage and storage profile and disk group policy elements of UCS Manager. In this video, quick step and a little animation through the kickstart phases, showing at each phase a best practice or something specific for UCS M series. For DHCP, I'm going to look at a strategy that I like to use for classifying clients in a way that's recognizable by the DHCP server and works with the DHCP server and specifically good with UCS manager managed clients. We'll go look at Pixie Boot config. There isn't anything really special there about UCS M series and what we need to do special in kickstart config to do hands off install specifically on UCS M series, specifically on inserting the drivers. SNIC is the virtual local storage driver that we we must insert it install time. Enic is the Ethernet driver, and the version on Cisco.com is newer than the one that's in the OS media, so we might as well install that one at install time as well. Here's a little animation of the phases and protocols and handshaking in the Pixie Kickstart install process. You have your client, which is the server being installed, which for us will be a UCSM series blade server. Server side supports these services, DHCP and TFTP and something to feed the OS media, often HTTP. Those are often the same server. You could have a situation where you want multiple DHCP servers separate, one on each subnet where you're going to have installed clients, yet they could all point to the same TFTP and media server, which you wouldn't have to replicate, for example. DHCP phase, the client is requesting not only the usual IP information, but also boot information and the boot information returned by the DHCP server is the next server information, which is just the IP information for the TFTP server and a file name, which is just a file name for a bootloader that will be retrieved from the TFTP server. Pausing there to look at the online example. I'm on my DHCP server, and the reason I wanted to show you the configuration here, at see DHCP, DHCPD.conf is not something so specific to UCSM series, but a good strategy that I use to classify DHCP clients in a way that's visible to DHCP servers that works really well with all UCS managed systems, B series and M series and C series that's managed by UCS Manager. And the idea there, all of this is fairly standard. You need these directives to allow booting. But what I want to do is classify clients by matching prefixes in the MAC address, which is a wonderful way of doing things in the UCS Manager world, since when I then set up the service profile templates, I can just pick different MAC pools for different kinds of templates. So in this example, every client has the same range of IP addresses on the same subnet, same router, same NIC server, which is the same TFTP server, but I'm going to classify them based on the first five octets, which will be what's in a MAC pool of the MAC address and a different classification. The second example would be for clients for Red Hat 7.0, for example, with a different prefix of the first five octets of the MAC address. And what I'm going to do is point to different bootloader file names in different subdirectories of my TFTP root arena. And therefore, configuration will be coming from two different directories based on a MAC prefix. So I'm able to classify 6.5 clients versus 7.0 clients via different MAC pools that have these different MAC prefixes. Okay, back to our drawing board. So the DHCP server would have returned next server, which is the IP of the TFTP server used in phase two, and the file name, which is the Pixie Linux bootloader. The bootloader retrieves a configuration file. Those have to be TFTP based on the configuration file in the menu that the configuration file typically tells it to build. The bootloader retrieves and loads a real Linux kernel that is the installer kernel. 
all of these phases in phase two were traditionally always TFTP, including loading the installer Linux kernel in the newer G Pixie Linux.0, the GNU variation. This last phase could be other protocols. In my example, you'll see it's actually HTTP, so I can load the installer kernel directly from the exact same medium on the same HTTP server where I'm actually going to be installing the OS. You may be familiar with the fact that Pixie Linux bootloader already has a way of classifying clients by having a search order for specific config files. So you may be wondering why I had to do what looks like the same thing in the DHCP config file. And the problem is there's various config files that you can put in Pixie Linux that config that allow you to classify the client but none of them allow you to classify a client using a MAC address prefix. You can use specific UUID shown on the first line, specific MAC address, or IP prefixes, but not MAC prefix, which is why I had that solution of letting DHCP classify different clients based on MAC address ranges and point to different subdirectories that contain different Pixie Linux.config directories as shown. Let me look online. Here's my TFTP root arena. Here's the two subdirectories that are specified by dhcpd.conf. Here is the pixie linux.config inside specifically the CentOS C65 arena. And I can look at that. I have a default menu item that'll install 64 bit CentOS 65. This timeout is in tenths of seconds, so it'll have a timeout of 20 seconds. So that if you accidentally still fell into this pixie boot, but were able to catch it in this 20 seconds and get out of it, or just boot the other menu item, which will just boot the local disk. Anyway, because this is the G pixie Linux, I can point to a kernel directly on my HTTP server in the mounted version of the CentOS 6.5 OS image. And I can do the same thing for the initial RAM disk image and point to a kickstart file that's specifically for CentOS 6.5. This file, pixielinux.cfg slash default, in the RH70 arena will look very similar, but of course it'll point to Red Hat 7.0 kernel and init rd.image and a slightly different kickstart file, and we'll see why we have to do that. Finally, back on this diagram, finishing our story for phase three. The Linux installer OS is running. We saw how the config file from phase two pointed to a kickstart config file, which will have instructions about how to do all the hands-off install, including pointing to the OS media, and the installer OS will continue and actually do the install. The last bit of configuration that we're going to look at are the kickstart config files. I don't have time to do the full science of these files here. Here is one big hint. Start by doing one interactive install where you get the configuration exactly like you're going to want it when you do the automated installs, especially in the software selection. When that's done, it generates inside your new OS a file called slash root slash anaconda dash ks dot cfg, which can become your model file for your automated ks dot cfg. Obviously, you'll have to change some stuff, but especially the packages section if you want your automated install to do the exact same software as you did in your interactive install you won't have to change anything there your model file will already be correct and even for all the other sections you can at least pre-populate the syntax of what the directives are going to look like even though of course you'll have to modify some of them to have a fully automated install rather than an interactive install Okay, looking online, now I'm on my web server. For me, the DHCP server and the TFTP server and the web server were one and the same as they often are. These kickstart files, the URL was pointed to in that Pixie Linux config file. Remember, it can be called whatever you want, but in that Pixie Linux config file, we had a KS equals URL directive. This particular example will only work for Red Hat 7.0, and the particular thing I wanted to show for UCSM series are these driver disk directives. In Red Hat 7.0, you'll be able to do both of these, both for SNCC 
and ENIC in CentOS 6.5, you'll only be able to do one of them, and it'll have to be for SNIC, and we'll have to upgrade the Ethernet drivers some other way, which we'll see. But I just wanted to concentrate on this top part. Notice that the ks.cfg file tells the installer OS where the actual media is for the entire OS, which itself could be on a different web server here. It's on the same web server, of course. So this is actually a mounted version of the standard Red Hat 7.0. OS install DVD, and I have these driver disk directives, and I can have two of them in the case of Red Hat 7.0, but not in 6.5. Also URLs, and this is the SNIC driver for the virtual local storage in driver disk format, exactly as extracted out of the master driver file that I could download from cisco.com for UCSM series. And this is the same thing for the Ethernet driver. There already is an Ethernet driver in the installer OS, but since I provide a driver disk for a newer version of Enoch, it will install that one too. I don't have to specify what the names of the drivers or the actual RPM files that are in these files. It will just automatically work. Looking at the 6.5 version of the Kickstart configuration file, the difference in what I wanted to show you is that I can only have one driver disk directive in CentOS or Red Hat 6.5, and here it has to be the SNIC driver for the virtual local storage because that's what I'm installing on. So if I also want to install other drivers like the ENIC driver, I could do it this way. And let me go to the bottom of the file down here and show a post install section that just off of a URL again, I don't have to do any pre-copying of this. It just installs specifically the RPM version of the Enoch driver. So I don't refer to the driver disk version, just the RPM version, which is also in the archive that you get from cisco.com and just do install with RPM. Notice this would also work with Red Hat 7.0. I had just wanted to demonstrate how in Red Hat 7.0 you can have more than one driver disk directive up above there. The only other thing I wanna point out is this is not the only difference between a Red Hat 6.0 and Red Hat 7.0 kickstart config file you are definitely gonna to have to have separate files, especially the packages section, which I said you should just populate by doing an interactive install and then using the model are gonna look a lot different in Red Hat 6.5 and 7.0. Looking at UCS Manager, just to review what we've seen so far and then watch this thing run. In the LAN, what did we talk about? Having multiple Mac pools for different kind of clients with different prefixes then taking those and applying them to the NIC that you're gonna boot off in different templates that you're then classifying for different purposes. So for example, a template that'll get used to make service profiles to boot clients that'll install 6.5, has a NIC that you're gonna boot off that uses the RH6.5 client pool for its Mac pool, and another one that you'll use to install 7.0 clients has a boot NIC that uses a different Mac pool. That's the only difference between the two templates. Just to look at a couple of other elements, the storage profile has specified in its LUN configuration, which refers to the virtual local storage LUNs, a storage profile policy that will give me one 50 gig boot disk. And the boot order is the only other thing I wanna look at, so I'll set it up as I usually do to boot off the local disk first. So once that's finished installing, then by default, you'll always boot off the local disk and you won't fall into the LAN pixie boot unless there is nothing on the local disk. With the UCS VIC, you have to have this LAN element in the boot order in order to be able to boot off of it at all. If you're worried about it staying in the boot order once you've already successfully installed on the local disk, you could just delete this LAN element from the boot order later. Okay, I'm ready to instantiate one of these templates and just kind of watch it go. It's already associated with a server pool, so once I instantiate it, it'll automatically just go ahead and associate itself and I can start to watch it boot. Okay, we're doing the really fast configuration of the service profile. And I'm ready to launch the KVM and watch it go. And I'll power it on. Notice I can see here that it scanned and detected the virtual local storage LUN 50 gig that I had specified via the storage profile. There's nothing on the disk, so it's falling straight into the Pixie install. 
Notice the client MAC address looks like it came from my pool that I had wanted for Red Hat 6.5 clients or CentOS 6.5 clients. There's the menu. If I waited the full 20 seconds, then it would still drop into the OS install. There's the specification from the menu item to load the kernel directly from the OS media image on the HTTP server and the initial RAM disk image. Okay, so it's loading the installer kernel. Okay, you could see it said reading driver disk and it had detected the new hardware, the SNIC virtual local storage virtual controller that it could detect because it found our new driver that we inserted through the ks.config file. And the rest of the installation will proceed hands off. And once it reboots, and from every reboot thereafter, as long as there remains an OS on the virtual local storage disk, it'll just boot the disk because that was first in the boot order, and I'm ready to go. Thank you for watching.